Hi, welcome to the May 2016 update training. This month's topic is uh, Medicare Part B, prescription drugs, and the low income subsidy. Uh, this training will correspond with the ORS recertification exam. So Medicare prescription drug coverage, also called Medicare Part D, adds to Medicare health care coverage. It helps beneficiaries pay for medically necessary brand name and generic prescription drugs. Medicare drug plans are offered by insurance companies approved by Medicare. All people with Medicare are eligible to enroll in Medicare drug plans. To get coverage, a person must join a plan, so it's not automatic for most people. Now there are two main ways to get Medicare prescription drug coverage. The first is by joining a Medicare prescription drug plan, also called PDP. These plans add coverage to original Medicare, but these plans do not work with Medicare Advantage plans. The second way to get a Medicare prescription drug coverage is by joining a Medicare Advantage also called an MAPB. Um, and these are plans like um, an HMO or a PPO. Um, with, with the MAPB, they would get their Medicare coverage, um, Medicare Parts A and B, and then also get the prescription drug Part D through this Medicare Advantage plan. Now the term Medicare drug plan is used throughout this presentation to mean both PDPs and MAPDs. Um, now, what, when we're going through this presentation, on the bottom of each slide, um, if the slide corresponds to um, an ORS question, it's going to be noted on the bottom right. So this slide corresponds to ORS qu questions number 10, 11, and 40. Medicare drug plans may be different from each other in terms of which prescription drugs they offer, how much a person has to pay, and which pharmacies they can use. All Medicare drug plans must give at least a standard level of coverage set by Medicare. However, these plans offer different combinations of coverage and cost sharing. Plans may offer co more coverage and additional drugs, generally for a higher monthly premium. Most plans continue to offer different benefit structures, including tiers, co-payments, and or deductibles. Enhanced plans may offer additional benefits like coverage in the coverage gap, or coverage for drugs that Medicare Part D doesn't traditionally cover. Plan benefits and costs may change each year, so it's important to look at and compare your plan options annually. Now, you may, you may note that at the bottom of the slide, there is no there, um, information, and that's because this slide does not correspond to any of the ORS questions, but is here for your information. This is a graphical representation of the 2016 standard benefit structure for Part D plans. Plans may offer better coverage than what is shown. When a beneficiary is enrolled in a plan, they will pay a monthly premium. The premium will vary by plan, ranging from uh, $15 to approximately $115 each month in 2016. If a plan has an annual deductible, it can be no more than $360. This means that a beneficiary pays the first $360 of drug costs out of pocket before the drug plan kicks in. Once the deductible is the met, the beneficiary generally pays a 25% coinsurance. Once the total drug cost reaches $3,310, the beneficiary enters into the coverage gap where they pay a larger share of their drugs. In the coverage gap, 
a beneficiary will pay a 45% coinsurance for brand name drugs and a 58% coinsurance for generic medications. When the total drug cost reaches $7,515, the person leaves the coverage up and enters catastrophic coverage where the drug plan pays a larger share of the medication. And this slide it corresponds to ORS question number 28. Once you reach the gap in 2016, a person will pay 45% of the plan's cost for covering prescription drugs. A beneficiary will get these savings if they buy their prescriptions at a pharmacy or if they order them through the mail. The discount will come off the price that the plan has set with the pharmacy for that specific drug. If you have a Medicare drug plan that already includes coverage in the coverage gap, you may get a discount after your plan's coverage has been applied for the drug. The discount for brand name drugs will apply to the remaining amount that the person owes. Now, this improved coverage in the coverage gap, um, the coverage gap is reduced each year. So by 2020, a person will pay 25% for both brand name drugs and generic drugs in the coverage gap. And this slide corresponds to ORS question number five. True out-of-pocket or troop costs are the expenses that count toward your Medicare drug plan out-of-pocket threshold of $4,815. $4,850 for 2016. True costs determine when your catastrophic coverage begins. Your drug plan will keep track of your troop costs. Each month that you buy prescription drugs covered by your plan, your drug plan will mail you an explanation of benefits showing your troop costs to date. For payments to count toward the troop costs, Payments must be made by you or on your behalf, not covered by other insurance, and be for certain types of costs during, according to the plan rules. For example, drugs that are on the plan's formulary or sold at a pharmacy in the plan's network. If you switch plans during the year, your troop balance transfers to the new Medicare drug plan. Medicare has put processes in place for transferring the troop balance. Payments that count towards the troop include payments made by you, um, including payments from your Medica medical savings account, health savings account, or flexible savings account, payments made by family members or friends, payments made by Qualified State Pharmacy Assistance Programs. We don't have any, any of those in Michigan. Uh, payments made by Medicare's Extra Help, also called the Low-Income Subsidy. Payments made by Indian Health Services, most charities, drug manufacturers providing discounts in the coverage gap, and AIDS Drug Assistance Programs. Payments that do not count towards the troop are payments made by the Medicare drug plan, uh, the monthly drug plan premium, drugs purchased outside of the United States, drugs not covered by the plan, drugs excluded from Part B by law, over-the-counter drugs, um, or payments made by or reimbursed to by um, group health or retiree coverage, government-funded programs, or third-party assistance. You, only, you pay your only your plan premium if your yearly income in 2014 was $85,000 or less for an individual or 170000 or less for a couple. 
if you reported a modified adjusted gross income of more than $85,000 for an individual or $170,000 for a couple on your IRS tax return two years ago, which would be the most recent tax return information provided to Social Security by the IRS, you'll have to pay an extra amount for your Medicare prescription drug coverage. This is called the Income-Related Monthly Adjustment Amount, or IRMA. You pay this extra amount in addition to your monthly Medicare drug plan premium. If your income has gone down due to any of the following situations and the change makes a difference in your income level, Social Security considers, contact Social Security to explain that you have new information and may need a new decision about your IRMA. The next section will cover Medicare Part D prescription drug coverage, uh, covered and non-covered drugs, access to covered drugs, and medication therapy management. Medicare drug plans cover generic and brand name drugs. To be covered by Medicare, a drug must be available only by prescription, approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, used and sold in the United States, and used for medically accepted indication. Medicare covers prescription drugs, insulin, and biological products. Medicare also co covers medical supplies associated with the injection of insulin, like syringes, needles, alcohol swabs, and gauze. To make sure people with different medical conditions can get the prescriptions they need, Drug list or a formulary for each plan must include a range of drugs in each prescribed category. All Medicare drug plans generally must cover at least two drugs per drug category, but the plans may choose which specific drugs they cover. Coverage and rules vary by plan, which can affect what you pay. Even if a plan's prescription drug list doesn't include a specific drug, in most cases, a similar drug should be available. If you or your prescriber believes none of the drugs on your drug plan list will work for your condition, you may ask for an exception. Medicare drug plans must cover all drugs in six protected categories to treat certain conditions. Cancer medication, HIV AIDS treatment, antidepressants, antipsychotics, anticonvulsants, and immunosuppressants. Also, Medicare drug plans must cover all commercially available vaccines, including the shingle shot, but not vaccines covered under Medicare Part B, like the flu or pneumonia shot. You or your provider can contact your Medicare drug plan for more information about vaccine coverage and any additional information that the plan may need. By law, Medicare doesn't cover the following drugs. Drugs for anorexia, weight loss, or weight gain, erectile dysfunction drugs when used to treat a sexual or erectile dysfunction, fertility drugs, drugs for cosmetic or lifestyle purposes like hair growth, drugs for symptomatic relief of cough and cold, prescription vitamin and mineral products, non-prescription drugs. Plans may choose to cover excluded drugs at their own cost or share the cost with you. Each Medicare drug plan has a formulary, which is a list of prescription drugs that it covers. Each formulary must include a range of drugs in the prescribed categories and classes. To offer lower costs, many plans place drugs into different tiers which cost different amounts. Each plan can form its tiers in different ways. Here's an example of how a plan might form its tiers. Tier 1, for example, could be generic drugs, so the least expensive drugs. Tier 2 could be preferred brand name drugs. Tier 3 could be non-preferred brand name drugs. And tier four can be a specialty tier or drugs that high, have higher out-of-pocket costs. Now, in some cases, if your drug is a higher or more expensive tier, 
and your prescriber thinks you need that drug instead of a similar drug at a lower tier, you can request an exception and ask your plan for a lower copayment. Medicare drug plans may only change their therapeutic categories and classes in the formulary at the beginning of each plan year or to account for new therapeutic uses and newly approved Part D covered drugs. A plan year is a calendar year, January through December. Medicare drug plans can make maintenance changes to their formularies, like replacing branding drugs with a new generic drug, or changing their formularies as a result of new information on drug safety or effectiveness. Those changes must be made according to the prescribed approval procedures, and plans must give 60 days notice to CMS. You may be able to use the drug until the end of the calendar year. You may ask for an exception if other drugs don't work. Under Part D, no plan member should have their drug coverage discontinued or reduced for the rest of the plan year. However, this isn't the case when a drug is removed from the formulary due to a U.S. Food and Drug Administration decision or when a manufacturer takes the drug off the market. In those cases, Medicare drug plans are not required to get CMS approval or give 60 days notice. Medicare drug plans manage access to covered drugs in several ways. These are known as coverage rules. These include prior authorization, step therapy, and quantity limits. You may need drugs that require prior authorization. This means before the plan will cover a particular drug, your doctor or other prescriber must first show the plan that you have a medically necessary need for that particular drug. Plans also do this to be sure you're using the drugs correctly. Contact the plan about its prior authorization requirements and talk with your prescriber for questions. Step therapy is a type of coverage rule. In most cases, you must first try a certain less expensive drug on the plan's drug list that has been proven effective for most people with your condition before you can move up a step to a more expensive drug. For instance, some plans may require you first try a generic drug if available. However, if you've already tried a similar less expensive drug that didn't work, or if the doctor believes that because of your medical condition it is medically necessary to take a step therapy drug, with your doctor's help, you can contact the plan to request an exception. If the request is approved, the plan will cover the originally prescribed step therapy drug. For safety and cost reasons, plans may limit the quantity of drugs they cover over a certain period of time. If your prescriber believes that because of your medical condition, a quantity limit is not medically appropriate, you or your prescriber can contact the plan and ask for an exception. If the plan approves the request, the quantity limit won't apply to your prescription. If you're in a Medicare drug plan and take medications for different medical conditions, you may be eligible to get services at no cost to you through the Medication Therapy Management Program. This program helps you and your doctor make sure that your medications are working to improve your health. A pharmacist or other health professional does a comprehensive review of all your medications and talks with you about how to get the most benefits from the drugs you take. Any concerns you have, like medication costs and drug reactions, how to best take your medication, and any questions or problems you have about your prescription and over-the-counter medication. You'll get a written summary of this discussion, including an action plan that recommends what you can do to make the best use of your medication with space for you to take notes or write down any follow-up questions. You'll also get a personal medication list that will include the medications you're taking and why you take them. 
Your drug plan may enroll you in this program if you meet all of these conditions. You have more than one chronic health condition. You take several different medications. And your medications have a combined cost of more than $3,017 per year. This dollar amount, which changes each year, is estimated based on your out-of-pocket costs and the cost your plan pays for the medications each calendar year. The next section is for Part B, Eligibility and Enrollment. Part B, Eligibility Requirements. To join a Medicare prescription drug plan, you must have a Medicare Part A and or Medicare Part B. To join a Medicare Advantage plan with prescription drug coverage, you must have both Medicare Part A and B. Each plan has its own service area, which you must live in and to enroll. People in the United States territories, including Puerto Rico, U.S. Virgin Islands, Guam, um, and Samoa. If you live outside of the United States and its territories, if you're incarcerated, you are not eligible to enroll in a plan and therefore cannot get Part B coverage. Effective January 1, 2016, you must be lawfully present in the United States in order to enroll in a plan. Medicare drug coverage is not automatic. Most people must join a Medicare drug plan to get coverage. So while all people with Medicare can have this coverage, you need to take action to get it. If you qualify for extra help to pay for your prescription drugs, Medicare will enroll you in a Medicare drug plan unless you decline coverage or join a plan yourself. You can only be a member of one Medicare drug plan at a time. Creditable prescription drug coverage could include drug coverage from a former employer or union, TRICARE, Veterans Affairs, the Federal Employee Health Benefits Program, or Indian Health Services. If you have other prescription drug coverage, you'll get information each year from your plan that tells you if the plan is expected to pay, on average, at least as much as Medicare standard prescription drug coverage. We call this creditable coverage. Your plan may send you this information in a letter or include it in its newsletter. Keep this information because you may need it later if you join a drug plan later. If you have this kind of coverage when you become eligible for Medicare, you can generally keep that coverage and will not have to pay a penalty if you decide to enroll in a Medicare drug plan later, as long as you enroll within 63 days after your other drug coverage ends. when you can join or switch plans. When you first become eligible to get Medicare, you have a seven-month initial enrollment period for Part D. This includes the three months before your month of Medicare eligibility, the month of Medicare eligibility, and the three months after. Medicare op Medicare's open enrollment period runs from October 15th through December 7th each year, with changes going into effect on January 1st. During this time, a person can join, switch, or drop a PDP or an MAPD. From January 1st to February 14th of each year is the Medicare Advantage plan disenrollment period. During this time, a person can drop an MAPD and join original Medicare and a prescription drug plan. Special enrollment periods. You can make changes to your prescription drug coverage when certain life events happen. These include permanently moving out of the planned service area, losing other accreditable prescription drug coverage, 
if you were not properly told that your other coverage wasn't creditable, if you enter in, live at, or leave a long-term care facility, if you qualify for extra help, you have a continuous special enrollment period and can change plans at any time. If you choose not to join Medicare drug plan at your first opportunity, you may have to pay a higher monthly premium or a penalty if you enroll later. If you have creditable coverage when you first become eligible for Medicare, you can generally keep that coverage and won't have to pay a penalty if you choose to enroll in a Medicare drug plan later, as long as you join within 63 days after your other drug coverage ends. Also, you won't have to pay a higher premium if you get extra help paying your prescription drugs. The late enrollment penalty is calculated by multiplying 1% penalty rate times the national base beneficiary premium. In 2016, that number is $34.10. Times the number of full uncovered months you were eligible to enroll in a Medicare drug plan but didn't and went without other prescription drug coverage. The penalty calculation isn't based on the premium of the plan in which you enroll. The final amount is rounded to the nearest 10 cents and added to your monthly premium. The national base beneficiary premium may go up each year, so the penalty amount may go up each year as well. You may have to pay this penalty for as long as you have a Medicare drug plan. After you join a Medicare drug plan, the plan will tell you if you owe a penalty and what your premium will be. You may have to pay this penalty for as long as you're in a Medicare drug plan. If you don't agree with your late enrollment penalty, you may be able to ask Medicare for a review or reconsideration. You'll need to fill out a reconsideration request form that the plan will send you, and you'll have the chance to provide proof that supports your case. Steps to choosing a Medicare drug plan. The first step is to prepare. This includes gathering information on your current prescription drug coverage, gathering information on the prescription drugs you currently take, including the dosage and the frequency, and information about the pharmacy that you prefer. The second step is to compare plans on the Medicare plan finder. You can personalize your search. And then you can compare based on star ratings, benefits, costs, and any number of factors. And then the third step is to decide on a plan and join. People can enroll in a Medicare drug plan through Medicare by going online at Medicare.gov or by calling 1-800-MEDICARE. They could also choose to enroll with the plan either by going on the plan's website or calling the plan directly. When you join a plan or when Medicare enrolls you in a plan, the plan will send you an enrollment letter and membership materials, including an identification card and customer service information with a toll-free phone number and website addresses. Plans will also have a transition process in place if you're new to the plan and are taking a drug that is not on the plan's formulary. The plan must let you get a 30-day temporary supply of the prescription. This gives you time to work with your prescribing doctor to find a different drug that's on the plan's formulary. If an acceptable alternative drug isn't available, you or your doctor can request an exception from the plan and you can appeal denied requests. Each year, Medicare drug plans are required to send an annual notice of change to all plan members. The letter must be sent by September 30th, along with a summary of benefits and copy of the formulary for the upcoming year. You should read your annual notice of change carefully. The letter will explain any changes to you or your current plan, including changes to the monthly premium and changes to the cost-sharing information like copayments or coinsurance. Plans must send an evidence of coverage 
to all members no later than January 31st of each year. It gives details about the plan service area, benefits, and formulary, how to get information, benefits, extra help, and how to file an appeal. The plan may choose to send the evidence of coverage with the annual notice of change. Coverage determinations and appeals. A coverage determination is a decision made by your Medicare drug plan about the prescription drug benefit that you request. This includes whether a certain drug is covered, whether you've met all the requirements for getting a requested drug, and how much you must pay for the drug. You or your prescriber must contact your plan to ask for a coverage determination. You, your prescriber, or appointed representative can ask for a coverage determination by calling your plan or writing a letter. There are two types of coverage determinations, standard and expedited. Your request will be faster or expedited if the plan determines or if your doctor tells the plan that your life or health may be seriously jeopardized by waiting for a standard request. A plan must give you its coverage determination decision as quickly as your health condition requires. After receiving your request, the plan must give you its decision no later than 72 hours for a standard determination or 24 hours for an expedited determination. If your coverage determination request involves an exception, the time clock starts when the plan gets your doctor's supporting statement. If a plan fails to meet these time frames, it must automatically forward the request and case file to the IRE for review, and request will skip over the first level of appeal. There are two types of exceptions. The first is a formulary exception, where the drug is not on the plan's formulary, or um, to, to grant an exception, um, for example, step therapy. The second type of exception is a tier exception, for example, getting a tier 4 drug at a tier 3 cost. Person needs supporting statement from the prescriber. You, your appointed representative or prescriber, can make these requests, and the exception may be valid for the rest of the year. There are five stages to a Part B drug appeal process. So in a standard process, the person would uh, request a coverage determination, that's the initial decision, and they have 72, the plan has 72 hours in order to arrive at a decision in a standard process. Um, if they say no, there's the first level of appeal. Um, a beneficiary has 60 days to file the first level of appeal, um, and this is called a redetermination. The plan has a seven-day time limit to reach a decision for the first level of appeal. The plan says no. They can go to the beneficiary can go to the second level of appeal, and they have 60 days from the time they've received the decision from the first level of appeal to make a request for the second level of appeal. And this is a Part D IRE consideration. The IRE has a seven-day time limit to arrive at its decision. If they say no, the beneficiary has 60 days to file the third level of appeal, and that would be to the Office of Medicare Hearing and Appeals, um, the ALA, ALJ hearing decision. Um, this is only good for um, prescriptions that, that cost $150 or more. And um, the ALJ has a 90-day time limit to arrive at its decision. If they say no, um, there's the fourth level of appeal. A beneficiary has 60 days to file. And this is at the Medicare Appeals Council, the 90-day time limit for the Medicare Appeals Council to arrive at their decision. If they say no, there's the final level of appeal. Beneficiary has 60 days to file, and then um, this this level of appeal would be at a federal district court, and then this is only um, available for a, a drug that costs $1,460 or more.
extra help with Part B drug costs. Getting extra help means Medicare helps you pay for your prescription drug coverage monthly premium, any yearly deductible, co-insurance, and co-payments. If you have limited income and resources, you may get extra help paying for your Medicare prescription drug costs. Extra help is also called the low income subsidy. If you have the lowest income and resources, You'll pay no premiums or deductible and have small or no copayments. If you have slightly higher income and resources, you'll have a reduced deductible and pay a little more out of pocket. If you qualify for extra help, you won't have a coverage gap or late enrollment penalty. You'll also have a continuous special enrollment period and can switch plans at any time with the new plan going into effect the first day of the following month. You may get extra help if you have Medicare income below 150% of the federal poverty level and limited resources. You may qualify for extra help if your income and resources are below the limit shown on the slide for 2016. If you're married and live with your spouse, both of your incomes and resources count even if only one of you applies for extra help. If you're married and don't live with your spouse when you apply, only your income and resources count. The income is compared to the federal poverty level for a single person or married person as appropriate. Whether you and or your spouse have dependent relatives who live with you and rely on you for at least half of their support is also taken into consideration. This means that grandparents raising grandchildren may qualify, but the same person might not have qualified as an individual living alone. Only two types of resources are used to see if you're eligible for extra help. Liquid resources, like savings accounts, stocks, bonds, and other assets that can be changed into cash within 20 days, or real estate not including your home or the land in which your home is located. Items like wedding rings and family heirlooms are not counted when seeing if you qualify for extra help. This is a copy of the, the yellow paper. Um, I, I realize that this is somewhat small on your handout, so there's a separate handout that has just this information in a full, um, a full page. Um, so as you can see, this list the income threshold, asset threshold, monthly premium subsidy percentage, annual deductible, and then prescription co-payments for each category of low-income subsidy. So the first category of low-income subsidy is for those that have full Medicaid benefits or at 100% at of the federal poverty level. So this would mean that an uh, individual who has a monthly income of $1,010 a month could qualify. Um, and then the assets for an individual would be $2,000. Um, somebody at this level qualifies for 100% subsidy, meaning that they have no premium. There's also no deductible. And the prescription co-payments are $1.20. $1.20 for generic and $3.60 for brand new drugs. Um, the next category is 135% of federal poverty levels for a Medicaid eligible person. This means that this, this is somebody who qualifies for um, one of the Medicare savings programs, Quimby, Slimby, or Omby. Again, you have the income threshold, the asset threshold, the premium percentage, which is 100% subsidy with a $0 premium. This group also has no deductible. And then the prescription co-payments are $2.95 for generics or $7.40 for brand name drugs. The third category is for those who qualify for long-term care Medicaid. This includes nursing home Medicaid, the Medicaid waiver program, also called My Choice, or the PACE program. Um, the income and asset threshold is listed below. Um, it's 
it lists the income and assets for an individual, but because there's kind of this complicated formula uh, for a married couple, it doesn't actually list the income and a or assets for a married couple. The monthly premium subsidy percentage is 100% subsidy with a $0 premium. There's no deductible. And even though this group has a higher income threshold, there are no prescription co-payments because these are long-term care folks. So that ends the section for Medicaid-eligible people that qualify for low-income subsidy. Now, the, the second half of the page, these are people that actually filled out an application through the Social Security Administration for the low-income subsidy. So that first category you see um, is full subsidy. And that first category is 135% of the federal poverty level for income. Um, and then you'll see that first full subsidy column. The income between column one and two for the full subsidy are the same, but the assets are different. So that first column for full subsidy, um, that's for folks who have assets of 8780 or less for an individual, these folks would qualify for 100% subsidy, meaning no premium. They'd have no deductible, and then they'd have a co-payment of 295 for generics or 740 for brand name drugs. That second full subsidy column, again, the income's the same. The assets are a bit higher between 8781 and 640 for assets. They qualify for 100% subsidy, meaning no premium, but then they have a small deductible of $74, and then um, they have a slightly higher coinsurance, a 15% coinsurance on all medications. Finally, there's that partial subsidy category. This is for people with 150% of federal poverty level. You can see that income threshold is uh, $15.05 a month for an individual, or 2023 a month for a couple. You can see that the assets would be no more than 13640 for an individual, or 27250 for a couple. Um, these resource limits include um, burial expenses. And then you can see in this chart that the, the premium subsidy percentage it goes based on income. So we can see there's a 75% subsidy, a 50% subsidy, and a 25% subsidy, and the income threshold for each um, is, is below that. And then again, it has a small deductible of, of no more than $74 for deductible, and then a 15% coinsurance on all medications. You automatically qualify for extra help and do not need to apply if you have Medicare and get full Medicaid coverage, supplemental security income benefits or SSI benefits, or get help from Medicaid paying your Medicare Part B premium. These are the Medicare Savings Program, Quimby, Slumby, and Ombi. If you do not meet one of these conditions, you may still qualify for extra help, but you'll need to apply for it. If you think you're qualified but aren't sure, you should still apply. You can apply for extra help at any time, and if you're denied, you can reapply if your circumstances change. Eligibility for extra help may be determined by either Social Security or the state Medicaid agency. Um, you can apply for extra help by completing a um, by completing an application online at socialsecurity.gov, or you can call Social Security Administration and either apply by phone or get a paper application. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services uses state Medicaid data to help identify people with Medicare who have full Medicaid benefits and people who get help from their state Medicaid program paying their Medicare premiums and Medicare savings programs. CMS uses data from Social Security Administration to identify people who have Medicare and are entitled to supplemental security income but not Medicaid or who have applied and qualified for extra help. 
When you first qualify for extra help, CMS will enroll you in a Medicare drug plan if you don't join a plan on your own to be sure you have coverage. This applies whether you qualify automatically or whether you apply and qualify for extra help. Each month, CMS identifies and processes new automatic and facilitated enrollments. CMS chooses plans randomly from those with premiums at or below the regional low-income premium subsidy amount so that you won't have to pay a premium if you qualify for full extra help. If you qualify for partial extra help, you'll pay a reduced premium or no premium. If you have Medicare and full Medicaid benefits and don't choose and join a Medicare drug plan on your own, CMS will automatically enroll you in a plan that goes into effect the very first day you have both Medicare and Medicaid. You'll get a yellow auto-enrollment notice with the, same, the name of your plan that you're assigned to. For other people who qualify for extra help, you'll be assisted into a Medicare drug plan. The facilitated enrollment goes into effect two months after CMS gets notice that you're eligible. You'll get a facilitated enrollment letter on green paper in one of two versions for full or partial extra help. The LINAP program. Medicare's Limited Income Newly Eligible Transition Program is designed to remove gaps in coverage for low-income individuals moving to Medicare prescription drug coverage. Humana Inc., a contractor, has been operating the program for CMS since 2010. Enrollment in Medicare's LINAP program is temporary and ends once a low-income person with Medicare gets coverage through a Medicare drug plan. The program gives point-of-sale coverage to people with extra help who don't yet have a Medicare drug plan. It also gives retroactive coverage to people who have full Medicaid coverage or get supplemental security income benefits. The LINAP program has an open formulary for Part B covered drugs, does not require prior authorization, includes standard safety and abuse edits like refill to therapy duplication, and has no network pharmacy restrictions. However, CMS can't require a pharmacy to use this program. To be eligible to use Medicare's limited income net program, you must meet certain criteria. Have a health have a valid health insurance claim number, which is on your Medicare card, be eligible for Medicare Part B, be not enrolled in a Part B plan, not enrolled in a retiree drug subsidy plan through an employer, not be enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan that has uh, prescription drugs, not have out of, opted out of auto enrollment, and have a permanent address in the 50 states or District of Columbia. The Limited Income Newly Eligible Transition Outreach Team is also run by Humana, and it provides live webinar training to, counsel, to MAP counselors and pharmacy providers. There are three ways that you can access Medicare's Limited Income Newly Eligible Transition Program. The first is auto-enrollment by CMS. CMS auto-enrolls you in this program if you have Medicare and either get full Medicare paid coverage or SSI benefits. You're not automatically enrolled if you get help from your state Medicaid agency paying your Part B premium, uh, like in a Medicare savings program, or if you've applied and qualified for extra help. If you're auto-enrolled by CMS, your LINAP program coverage starts when you have when you first have Medicare and either get full Medicaid benefits or SSI benefits during the last uncovered month, whichever is later. Point of sale use. If you get extra help, you may use Medicare's limited income net program at the pharmacy counter. The pharmacy participation is voluntary. Or submitted a receipt. You may submit pharmacy receipts for prescriptions already paid for out-of-pocket during eligible periods to the Medicare's lineup program. 
if you use Medicare's lineup program by uh, point of sale at the pharmacy counter or by submitting a pharmacy receipt, you may get retroactive coverage up to 36 months as long as you qualified for Medicare and either full Medicaid coverage, SSI benefits. You can get up to 30 days of current coverage if you get help from your state Medicaid agency paying your Part B premium, like the Medicare Savings Programs, Quimby, Slumby, and Ombi, or if you've applied and qualified for extra help. You can get immediate coverage if you show evidence like the Medicaid ID or extra health eligibility notice to the pharmacy at point of sale, or even if CMS systems can't confirm your eligibility status. So that concludes the content portion of our training. Um, here's a resource guide if you want any other information about anything that we talked about today. And this training was developed by CMS National Training Program. Um, and their website and information is uh, listed below. Um, thank you so much for attending this training. If you have any questions, please let your site coordinator and myself know. Thank you so much.